Today we're gonna talk about the one thing harder than drawing people. What's up friends, Liron here. Uh, thank you for joining me in another video. This time what I want to do is something a little different. I want to do a flip through through this book uh, called Drawing Scenery, Landscapes and Seascapes uh, by Jack Ham. Just a beautiful book and the reason why I want to do a uh, flip through flip through through this book is that it really really helped me with some key concepts for drawing landscapes and what's beautiful about it is that it it talks in a very general sense about drawing landscapes meaning you can really apply all of the principles here to any medium you use so if you like to do pen sketches or if you like to draw using pencil or if you like to paint using any of the painting mediums uh, this one will help you because it talks about really the general uh, rules and sort of guidelines of composition making a picture interesting to the viewer a few words about the author Jack Ham um, I just read about him on Wikipedia and he has a really interesting story actually so uh, he was an American ar artist he actually died in uh, 1996 um, he was really well known for his um, Christian themed work um, and as you can see also in the book he has a lot of um, I think he did a lot of like landscapes uh, that combine a lot of Christian uh, and Bible biblical uh, themes I guess now uh, he was from Wichita Kansas and uh, he started drawing actually when he was five and even before going to university he already worked on the comic strips for uh, Bugs Bunny, El Yoop, and I think another one that I don't know, Boots and Her Buddies. Um, so he's really an interesting guy. I'll share a link below so you can read about him a little more. Um, so let's just jump right into it and just begin flipping through and I'll share uh, sort of the, the key things I learned uh, from this book. Okay, so I just want to give you a better uh, view of the cover here. Uh, already you can see some of the beautiful uh, landscapes uh, that he did here. Now, I want to jump s just straight to the beginning because what I love about this one is that it, it actually talks about really useful stuff just from the get-go. And so the first uh, key advice I would give you uh, coming straight from this book is to work in smaller sizes. So if you examine the book, it's really small thumbnails and this is where I got the idea to do my thumbnail exercises that you may have seen on Snapchat or Instagram uh, because it's just so much better when dealing with uh, composition because what happens is when you use a smaller area for the for the landscape you aren't too bogged down by a huge area and you're trying to figure out the relations and stuff like that it's really easy to see really simple and you can just create like 10 of these in one session of, of you know practicing and it's just really really good so I would say this is the first really good advice just to draw on a smaller uh, smaller area I actually made here by his advice by Jack's advice I made this small square that I just place on the paper and then I, I trace around it and then I have the or like this most of the time and then I have the area I want to work on so this is just a really good advice I, I did it with a ruler in the beginning and then he just said cut a piece of you know cardboard or whatever it is and use that and it really helped me so yeah so that's the first thing now if we continue flipping through uh, so we have this I think one of the key themes in this book is actually the observer's attention and how you can sort of uh, command its attention and decide on which uh, on the path of movement. So you can see here if you add a focal point then the eye goes there, if you add a, a larger one the eye goes there. There's also focal, uh, talk of focal area that you can see right here and this is, I mean, it's things that are really should be taught in the beginning but many self-taught artists sort of skip them. I know for sure that um, I didn't deal too much with these kinds of stuff in the past. Um, maybe a bit, you know, but it was shallow. Here you actually get to practice it, uh, which is really helpful. Um, if we move forward, this one I loved. It's about dividing space. And so he explains about the, the different ways uh, to divide space, like uh, in terms of actual, not technique, but, you know, line or thick line or just an area or different uh, patterns, uh, gradual or uh, really sharp changes. And he just shows how by applying this really quickly you can really suggest 
um, landscapes and, and really easily with just a few very basic components. Um, now, what I like even more about this one is this part about the principles of good space division. Um, he actually shows what to avoid. So, for example, uh, you know, the rule of thirds that's very well known in photography. Um, so this one is even more advanced than that. First off, you don't want to divide uh, your area straight in the middle because that's, again, that's not really helpful to convey something interesting. Um, you want to divide it more, you want to avoid connecting uh, corners. Some very good principles <laughs> really help. Um, some of those, by the way, I was doing intuitively, but many of them I never thought about, so it's really good. And I'll show you in a second the more advanced divisions and you'll be blown away, I think. So now he shows how you take, for example, uh, these two landscapes, which are nearly identical, A and B, but the thing is that with A, the uh, horizon line divides the top and bottom parts equally. And once you just drop that horizon line lower, it makes the composition so much better. Uh, because again, it's not an equal division, but also it makes the tree go above the horizon line, sort of cutting it. And this is a really good principle I already uh, knew about and thought about just um, to have objects sort of cutting the horizon uh, line just to convey depth. Um, so it's really good. Uh, another example, this one, so C and D. On C, you can see that the main tree is just dead in the center, and on D, it kind of moved to the side, and it's just so much more interesting. And I challenge you, actually, if you get this book, to really pay attention to where your eyes are going uh, when you look at his landscapes, and you will notice it's very interesting. It just, your eyes just captured. Okay, now if we go further to the more advanced part here, um, you can see it just talks about how to create a, a movement, like a trail, uh, a travel uh, trail for the eye. And it's really wonderful because he starts with a very simple division. He adds on top of that more divisions and finally he builds this thing. Now, even though there's literally nothing here, it's just lines, you can sort of feel the movement of the eye moving from this strong contrast area to this one, to this one, depending on where you start. Um, just like he shows here, it's just phenomenal. This one was, this is one of the key parts for me in this book. So um, th this I think in terms of the how to divide the space. Now another great lesson I learned from here is the actual uh, analysis of the movement of the eye. Now look at that. That's crazy. I, I didn't see anything like that in the past. Maybe I missed it and it's like everywhere. I don't know but this one, let me zoom in a bit so you can see. Uh, he just does like a charting for all the, the different elements and how they affect the movement of the eye. So if you have uh, one point of interest, then all the lines, like you would converge to that one no matter where you start looking at the image. Um, if you have uh, perhaps a line and a, and a point of uh, interest, then there's sort of a tension built from the line to the point. Uh, it's completely different if the point is on the line and you just get this beautiful analysis of every different contingency, just really interesting, really fascinating. I haven't seen many other people talk about this in such detail, okay? Um, what do we have else here? We have the, uh, okay, now this was a great one. Let me zoom out. This is another one I really loved because he just takes, uh, he talks about principles of using the elements of the picture to create interest. And now, you see, if we take just uh, three equal squares, it's not really interesting. The moment you turn them into different sizes, it becomes a little more interesting. But also then you want to break the pattern and divide them. And then he just goes on to show you how different placements, um, different compositions just create something interesting. And if you notice here, these th three squares are actually the basis for these rocks. And just with this simple one, you can see how it's sort of, it, it's just interesting, you know, just look at how your eye moves across uh, this tiny landscape that can be the basis for a larger one, you know, and just phenomenal. I love this part. And the final part that I really liked um, is this, what, where he actually shows how to use the, he calls it the principle of threes, uh, how to use that uh, just in anything. So in the uh, area division and in the elements you put into the area and just it's beautiful look when applied. It's so simple and it just creates simple yet interesting uh, compositions. So whether you, you do like pen work or pencil or watercolor like me or anything else, 
<laughs> this is super useful. This is really good. Um, anyway, there's so much more to this book and you'll just have to check it out for yourself uh, if you want to learn more because I really highly recommend it. it. It's just a book that I think is a must if you want to create art that's interesting. Um, so uh, this is it for the flip through. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, flip through. I want to end it with a quote actually from him from the introduction uh, of the book, which I think is just great. So I'm just going to read it. Um, so he says, in a very real sense, scenery art is more important today than ever before. A crowded world has brought with it tension, congestion and a cooped up feeling. A good landscape or seascape becomes a wondrous window through which the human soul may take wing, then return refreshed, better fitted for the tasks ahead. Congratulations on your choice of so noble a pursuit. So <laughs> when I read this, I was like, this is going to be an amazing book. Um, anyway, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think uh, about the flip through idea and if you want to see more of it, if there are uh, books that really influenced me. So I'll be happy to do that. Um, and this is it. If you enjoyed, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Snapchat where I share all of my processes. Actually, I shared a lot of screenshots from this book uh, there as well um, and just how I apply them. So you want to check that out and I'll see you soon in another video. Until then, take care.